Welcome to another video from Lucky Fish. Let me tell you a little about why we do this. Somewhere between one and three hours goes into editing time for every minute of video that we produce. A central theme of our channel is that less is more. You don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars working your life away to follow your dream. We think that's a positive message and an important one in an age where we're constantly being bombarded by bigger is better. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, then check out this video from a popular sailing magazine. Well, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry when I watched it. Nigel Irons is a great designer. He's a real free thinker. But look at what that magazine did with the title of that video. You could forgive any newcomer to sailing to walk away after watching that video feeling that sailing is a rich man's sport. Now check out our reply to that video here. Now which one of those two videos do you think is of more use to you in choosing a catamaran? We'd be interested to see your comments. If you think our message is a good one, that less is more, and you're in a position to help it spread, then you can support it through Patreon. This week's video is the final part in a six-part playlist on how we prepared ourselves and the boat to cross the Atlantic. You can find that playlist on our channel page. Before we continued our voyage north along the coast of Namibia, Gunther showed us some of the countryside and explained more about the diamonds here. Here he goes. Here he goes. But they will drink. But what do they eat? They off off the little plants and so stuff. They, 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 feed, they feed on your grasses when early in the morning. When it's, um, all the light stuff got blown away. And the diamonds would usually lie at the northern end of the valley. Yes. Concentrated. Yeah. Okay, where as the valley goes up, you know, and the rains the would stuff, the, the rains, stuff, light stuff gets the lines get the, the, the rains would wash it down, yeah. and then the wind would blow it up. When the rains wash it down, then this millions of years, and eventually you've got super After saying our farewells and thanking Gunther for his hospitality, we left Luderitz and began the 250 mile sail north. It was Toya's first sail ever, and she was feeling seasick, but putting on a brave face. It's a bit funny feeling sometimes. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's normal. Doing the right thing sitting up there and getting a good uh, look around the horizon. Rory got the girls distracted by showing Zaya how to drop the foresail, hitch the gaff halyard forward of the stay, and re-hoist the sail for running downwind. Here, the staysail is tacked to one of the bows and set like a small spinnaker. Despite the sun, and being only 26 degrees south of the equator, it was still cold. The Benhuela current brings cold water from the southern ocean, and with it fog, and penguins. <laughs> Red ones in this case. It's the pingy pit. What do pingies do they go? How do they walk? <laughs> <laughs> the wind increased and shifted behind us, so Rory used the spinnaker halyard to hoist the staysail against the foremast. The spinnaker sheet winch is used to control the sheet and a preventer is tied off at a mooring cleat. It's a good downwind rig. Batwings, the girls called it. Yeah. 
The next morning Toya was feeling better and learning some knots, as well as sharing some they use in Mongolia. What are you doing girls? Knots. Knots? Oh, okay. the knot already. The, the, what's the name of the knot? Which one? The bowline? Yeah, bowline. bowline, yeah. That's mm -hmm. oh, Toya learning it. She knows already. Aye. Yeah. Use it. Oh, <laughs> true. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a quick release bowline. That's good. Mm. You should show Rory that one. I'm not sure he's seen that knot. That's quite good. It's the one they use to tie their horses. It's a quick release bowline. Oh, nice one. This is a No, not quite the ball lane, but um, Is this a uh, chef special tonight, Rory? Yeah, it is, mate. Yeah. It beats leftovers. Huh? It beats leftovers. Um, boat bean, uh, boat bean stew, eh? <laughs> boat beans. <laughs> yeah. With the help of Mrs. Balls, it'll be great. <laughs> Bit of Mrs. Balls flavouring, eh? Yeah. Our time with Rory was coming to a close. His presence on board for those few short weeks had given us the best possible start to our journey. But it would be two and a half years and another 10,000 miles before I fully realised the lessons I'd learned from Rory. He had shown me what it truly means to sail a warren. The importance of attending to a job straight away, whether it's a loose lashing, a crack in the paintwork, or a sail change in the middle of the night. To sail a warren, the boat becomes part of you and you must become part of the boat. For me, anyway, this is the essence of sailing. We had already come a long way in the short time since buying the boat. Apart from Rory, two other things had really helped and they both had more to do with state of mind. The first one is to deal with each step, one step at a time, and only focus on the immediate step. To look at the plan to cross the Atlantic, and the list of jobs that go with it, would have defeated us before we began. The second one is only a saying, but this one is a saying that really did help. Obstacles are things you see when you take your eyes off your goal. Try it next time you need to. I found it made all the obstacles in our path either shrink or disappear. In the evening of the third day out from Luderitz, we arrived at Wolvis Bay and began soaking up some of the atmosphere. Where's the wildlife? <laughs> where's, 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 I can't see the seal, eh? Oh, he's on the bow. The seal's on the bow, really? It was, yeah.
Hay nào mát. <laughs> Sadly, we had to say goodbye to Rory and plunged straight into finishing unfinished jobs. What are you doing, girls? <laughs> <laughs> we attached the new storm enclosure and the girls set about fitting the tie downs. I was looking for this. We lashed on the new trampoline. And slide it so it's just on the Y. Happy with that? To our disappointment, more than half the track slides did not fit the track. Yeah. More. Chinese more. Rubbish. I don't the regular strong afternoon sea breeze at Walvis Bay and the unique geography of this sheltered beach has combined to make Walvis famous in the world of sailing. It is here that Paul Larson and his team on Sail Rocket 2 set the current world 500 meter and nautical mile speed records. An incredible top speed of 65.45 knots. It's an amazing story and well worth following as Sail Rocket 3 is now in the pipeline. But our time at Walvis was more down to earth. Zaya finds there is still more filing required. Then we cut down the counterweights for the vane steering to get them to balance. Okay. I finally got a chance to commission the water maker and I couldn't have picked a worse spot to do it.
The filters quickly browned as they struggled to clean the water from Warvis Bay. It was a rookie mistake. They look like two little pups, don't they? Maybe brother and sister. Ah, oh, they're too cute. We went for a couple of day sails while at Wolvis and had a fusion of Mongolian and Namibian food one night to let the girls feel at home and a little bit homesick too. <laughs> the girls took on the task of attaching the cones they'd made back in Mongolia to the road on the Jordan series drogue. This was no easy task as the road we had custom made in Cape Town was very tightly woven. You're waking up Toya. You are so bad. Go on, give her a knock. What's going on? Yeah, it is. It's cold, it's grey. Walvis Bay is a super grey place. Look at this place, my god, every morning it's grey, foggy, there's the oil rig, it's our navigation, that's north, oil rig is north. What's breakfast? Coffee, muesli, banana, yum yum yum, and vanilla yoghurt. It's just a grey world. Lucky fish is decked out in grey colours, and it kind of suits this place. New Walvis Bay port expansion. One final job was to stock the boat for the Atlantic crossing, or at least get us to St. Helena Island, 1,200 miles away. After 10 days at Wolvis, the jobs were complete. We had one final dinner ashore before leaving. You can take it out in here. How is it? Tastes me good now. <laughs> Feel even better later. <laughs> <laughs> Well everyone, that's how our journey began. Our very first video, published 18 months ago, picks up the story as we leave Africa bound for the Caribbean. You can check out this playlist and watch all our videos in order. Please subscribe, like, comment and share and click on the bell icon 
next to the subscribe button to be notified every time we release a new video. Thanks for watching. Next Friday we flash forward two and a half years for a special peek into our present journey. Join us for a sail to Cuba.